Hi, my name is Juan Castro, Associate Editor of IGN Cube, and today we're going to be reviewing Star Fox Assault. Okay, the latest game in the series is set uh, right after the events of the second game, Star Fox 64, when uh, remnants of Andros' fleet um, are actually posing a new threat. Um, it's pretty much all action. Assault is all about blasting stuff, and just like the other games. Assault splits between two main separate play styles. Uh, there are the flying missions and ground missions. These then split according to whatever vehicle you're in. So there are the R-wing missions, the land master missions, which, are, uh, which is a tank, and pilot missions, uh, with each one controlling a little bit differently. The R-wing missions were obviously my favorite, and I get the feeling they'll be everybody's favorite. They're hands down the best part of the game, um, especially the first level. The first level sports just, you know, stellar visuals, the action's great, it's brisk. And while the first level is really, really, really great, I played it like six or seven times in a row, it's just very, very fun. Um, it's all pretty much downhill from there in terms of the R-Wing missions. None of them really uh, reach the level of, of intensity as the first level, both in terms of design and also just in terms of uh, the different enemies and bosses that you fight in that first level. There's also free roaming stages, um, which debuted in Star Fox 64. Uh, the most notable of which is where you're defending a space station from attack. Um, it's one of the few instances in the game where you're doing something aside from destroying a number of targets. Now, in essence, you're still destroying a number of targets, but the purpose is different. You're actually defending something. Of course, there are the, the classic rail sections, like the first level again, and also later on down the line where you'll be flying through a space station and dodging mechanical arms, dodging asteroids, uh, blasting asteroids, and just taking out like entire squadrons of ships and that is as cool as ever. Second are the Landmaster missions um, which don't really feel as responsive or as intuitive and just aren't as much fun as the R-Wing missions. The Landmaster tank looks far more nimble than it actually is. It doesn't drive around with much precision. Um, controlling the actual turret is a little wonky and it's gonna, it's gonna make you miss a couple shots. You can also uh, hover, you can use a tank hover to reach certain objectives or to destroy uh, certain targets, but again, it doesn't feel as precise as flying the arming through space. When you're actually on foot, it actually feels the most awkward of the uh, three different play styles. Again, Fox is, he looks nimble, he jumps high, he jumps fast, he actually runs really fast also, but aiming takes a while to get used to. You'll sustain a ton of damage and die several times before actually mastering the controls. Once you do, things lighten up, things get easier, and it's very possible to take out just hordes of enemies without taking any damage yourself. But it takes a while to actually get down there. The game is 10 missions long, 40% um, of which you'll spend um, in a mixture of air and space, the other 60% being on foot missions, which is a total downside because you will want to be in space most of the time. The game is not very hard, even on a normal or difficult uh, game settings, the game shouldn't take more than five hours or so to beat. Multiplayer actually offers a decent amount of fun, um, even though it's very fleeting, it's very short. There's very limited game modes, it's pretty much just deathmatch and variations of deathmatch. The maps are uninspired, they don't have any real obstacles or cool sniper spots or turrets or anything of that, of that nature. Um, the actual coloring of the different maps is also kind of a hindrance because it's very hard to see uh, a character when you're running around the map. It's very hard to spot and very hard to aim. You can actually unlock maps that you play. Uh, as you play the game, you'll unlock maps from the levels that you're beating, so you can actually play in those, which is kind of cool, and are a lot better than the uh, VR-looking missions that are included um, from the get-go. In terms of graphics, uh, again, a very mixed bag. Uh, the first level is by far the best-looking chunk in the entire game. The opening space battle looks great. Uh, when you actually fly down onto uh, the planet, it also looks very, very good. Um, looks so good, in fact, that it almost looks like the first level and the rest of the game were almost developed by two totally different people, uh, or two totally different groups, I should say. Not to say that the rest of the game doesn't look, uh, you know, good, because it does, but it just doesn't look as good. To sum up, Star Fox is a decent game. It's an excellent rental, especially seeing as you can beat it within five hours. So you just rent it, beat it, return it, not bad. Um, it looks it looks pretty good. It sounds it sounds pretty good. Um, of course, both areas could have used a little bit of tweaking, uh, both visually and in terms of just the way it sounds. It could have used better voiceovers, a little bit cooler music. Um, in terms of play style, we really would have liked to see a little bit more more variation here. Um, the classic 
rail shooter sections are, are awesome, especially the first level. Um, they tend to get a little repetitive toward the end, and the ground missions on the whole are just, they feel unrefined, unpolished, and just don't offer the same level of visceral excitement as the ones in space. Still, on the whole, the game is fun, it's short, it's a nice little rental.